debates whether the backdoor system is going to benefit Offaly this year. This is the big test coming up. Looking at the Offaly team, they've made changes the last day against Derry. They didn't work. They've changed things sort of back again and made a few other changes, like Joe Erity at centre back. What do you think of the Offaly lineup? Well, I, I suppose people are kind of wondering. I mean, what's what's going to make the big difference with Offaly today? I mean, you go back to their Wexford performance. They gave a very good performance that day against Wexford, um, but since then they've failed to impress. Uh, certainly, centre back has been a troublesome spot. And they've put Brian Whelan in there. They've put Kevin Martin in there. Neither of them seem to be happy at, uh, at their own game playing a centre back. And I think they made, maybe made a, a wise move, putting Jarity in to stop the big man Fergal McCormack from puckles and things like that, and let Brian Whelan and Kevin Martin to run onto the sweeping ball and pick it up in that stage. That's a crucial area for Offaly, I think, in, in this game. Their, their half back line. They need Brian Whelan and, and yeah. Kevin Martin to dominate. And if they can do that, certainly they, they'll, 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 they'll be a match for Cork. But the big question is, will they have the desire, will they have the belief in themselves? I mean, they need to come out to me and impress, like, like no other team has in the past, 100 miles an hour stuff, and, and, and take the game to Cork. Cork, on the other hand, I'm sure, won't be complacent themselves. If they get off to a good start, they will feel very, very confident they could put the game beyond, beyond Offaly. But if they allow Offaly into the game, it could lead to the similar type of game that we had last year, pint for pint, right up to the last few minutes. A piece we saw Jim O'Sullivan there, uh, John Lowe Cusack and the boys looking, I have to say, well keyed up for this game because, I mean, there is an All-Ireland final at place here. Nothing comes handy in hurling. Uh, yeah, this is championship hurling and it's 70 minutes decided it. And the big fear that Cork have now at the moment and Jimmy Barry and the selectors is that the game will get away from, from um, Cork. And the longer they leave Offaly in the game, the longer chance is the Cork are going to get beaten. And that's, that's the one big worry that the Cork has today. But they're young. This, this Cork team haven't been in Crow Park that often. Um, and they, they're hungry. They're still very, very youthful. They want to emulate their heroes of the past in winning 2 and 3 and 4 all Ireland. And this is the biggest opportunity they're going to get in their lives as of now. They might not get the opportunity to be back again. Tipperary are knocking at the door. Waterford are there. Limerick are coming back. So they're going to be saying to themselves, look, we're 70 minutes away from an all Ireland final. Let's get stuck in here from the world go and give it everything. Offaly, on the other hand, they'll be relying that Cork will be a little bit complacent. They're going to come out. They have nothing to lose Offaly whatsoever today. And Pat Flurry there, he was in the interview beforehand, and, and he was saying what is the difference between this training they've done and in the past before the quarterfinal. And he says it's all in the mind. And when it comes down to it, the boss will tell you this, like, yeah. when you go up to Park there, if you don't think that you are a better man than what you're standing beside, then you're beaten. And Pat Flurry, I'm sure, has worked very hard on the mental side of, of the Offaly game. And if Offaly get that right, they're playing at home in Crow Park. They know what the surroundings is with yeah. the stand knock and the whole lot. They're going to give, give a very good account of themselves. Well, it's all in the mind. It'll all be on the field as well over the next 70 minutes or so. Who will have the greater physical and mental attributes to win this All-Ireland semi-final? Our team at Croke Park, Liam Griffin and Ger Canning. Welcome okay, back to you really once again. And uh, Cork are out and awfully just about to come. And there's a big cheer for them. A big welcome from the side who finished runners up at Leinster. But this, of course, this afternoon, the meeting of the champions for the last two years. It's the third ever meeting of these teams. Of course, they made it the All Ireland final in Thurles in centenary year 1984. And last year, awfully yet to get a victory in a championship match against Cork. Will today be the day? Awfully the only team, of course, ever to lose the provincial final and win the All-Ireland subsequently. And it's interesting, Offaly's four All-Ireland wins have come in the last 20 years, and in that time span, well, Cork also have four All-Ireland victories. For all that, the Offaly fans here appreciate that their team are very much the underdogs. The favourites are from Cork. But Offaly have a fighting spirit. They haven't played well this year, played for a spell in the Leinster final, but then rocked, I think, by that DJ Carey goal, the classic before half-time. And it seemed to take the stuffing out of their challenge for the second 35 minutes. Sean O'Gohalpine here, his brother Satanto, you've seen him in the minor match, and he reminded me of a young Ray Cummins. I can see him playing full forward in future years. And there, of course, is Alan Brown, the black rock man. So let's check on the team news then. As befits champions, Cork make just one change to their starting 15 by comparison with the team that began against Tipperary. The back line remains intact. Fergal Ryan captains the side from right corner back, and last year's star player Brian Corcoran is in his usual centre-back position, fronted by a new midfield partnership of Pat Ryan and Derek Barrett. Mickey O'Connell loses out. Among the forwards, Neil Rohn is the one to start on the bench as Alan Brown continues his championship career at left half forward. It's a 
steely half forward line, but with pace of plenty in the inside forward division. McGrath, Dean, and O'Connor. Well, I suppose they could yet be setting their sights on Sydney as well as another All Ireland medal. And the substitutes for Cork this afternoon. And of course, a reminder that you can use five substitutes this season. And there's plenty of experience in there. I mentioned Neil Ronan, there's Kevin Murray as well. Jerry O'Connor is a twin brother of Ben. And Mark Landers, last year's captain, number 17 there. There's Frank Murphy out there, the Cork County Board Secretary, having a chat with Jimmy Barry Murphy. Tim Owens, the team trainer, is alongside him. Johnny Crowley, of course, as well. And Tim wants me to remind or to remember a little girl called Cleana Looney. At least I think she's a little girl, down in Alahees. Damien Martin inside there with the sunglasses, one of those that starred, of course, when the breakthrough was made. And let's see Offaly then. Well, there's been an expected changing of the guard in the Offaly ranks for this 12th ever semi-final appearance. Niall Clappy has moved back to the left corner. Brian Wheelahan is right half. Joe Errity gets a new assignment at centre-back with Kevin Martin on the wing. And Ger Oakley gets another chance in midfield. Gary Hanafy switches onto the 40, while the full forward line has a fresher feel about it. Michael Dignan is up from half-back, John Ryan is released from the bench, and Joe Dooley is restored to top of the left. And there's Johnny Dooley, of course, his brother Billy now in retirement, along with Martin Hanafy, missed, of course, and Hubert Rigney, who's out injured, and the Offaly substitutes who hope to come in and play their part, and they include Barry Wheelahan, Paddy Mulhair, they've got semi-final experience from last year, and of course there are youngsters as well who've been doing so well at senior, but in particular at under-21 level, Connor Gath and Adrian Aidan Hanrahan, who's number 20. Pat Fleury has the difficult task, I suppose, of rousing the spirits once again, in particular that was difficult after the Leinster final loss, three losses in a row to Kilkenny, and then of course they were rocked to a large extent by the sheer wonderful performance of Derry, the Ulster champions, but just about held on, showed character towards the end, which was very important. John Ryan up for front this afternoon, he'll be at full forward, marking Dermot O'Sullivan. And in the middle of the field, well, it's Jer Oakley. Never quite sure as he got a sister called Annie, but it's some name. He was taken off in the last match. He hasn't yet really managed to cement a position in the Offaly team, but this is his big chance. Kevin Martin is left half-back this afternoon, and a terrific player, but very much seen, I think, as a half-back rather than a centre half-back, I mean a left winger. Kevin Martin, by the way, playing his 30th championship match. Joe Errity here playing in his 22nd. He's six foot three inches tall, so he has the physique, and today he'll be up against Fergal McCormack. And, of course, McCormack from the Cork puckouts by Donald O'Cusick has tended to drift to the right and to the left, opening up gaps, and Joe Errity knows all about that. And there's uh, Michael Dignan down there. Well, he must be wondering what uh, is the best position they could pick for him. He's playing his 42nd championship match this afternoon. It's his 13th championship season. And there's Brian Wheelahan. Well, he had a brilliant match in last year's semi-final against Cork. Uh, the two Brians, I think, played excellently that day. Brian Corcoran for Cork, the number six. Well, they go into the huddle, final, final opportunity to have some words of encouragement, and it's Ted Owens who is uh, taking the responsibility of the last few words of advice. Offaly won the toss, and they're up to play from left to right, which means the breeze is uh, a little against them, I think. Well, lots of people looking at this everywhere and anywhere, and... Uh, there are 30 juvenile members from the Cove GAA, I believe, in the Valley Stand, supporting their hero, who's Derek Barrett. And I know that Dan Roach and John Rail is also looking forward to a, a right good game here. Last year, you'll remember, it was 19 points to 16. Hopefully led 16-14, but Cork got the last five points, and Jodine was the top scorer with 10. Well, Liam Griffin is here alongside me, the former Wexford manager. And uh, your thoughts, Liam? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a big game for Offaly. There's not really that massive pressure on them, in fact, to come in as underdogs. So that, that should help them a lot. But I think if they're going to win this match, we're going to need a seriously big performance again from Johnny Dooley, who has been really been the man that's driven Offaly so far this year. 
but I think Brian Whelan and Kevin Martin in particular are going to have to really perform in the half-back line and supply good ball uh, and also they're going to expect Joe to hold down that centre-back position at centre-back uh, he's going to have difficulty with Fergie McConnell but he can just hold his own there and the two wing-backs start to hurl but having said that Alan Brown will be a handful uh, he's a big man and Brian Whelan will, 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 won't find it easy uh, they've picked a the big full forward line again. I mean, this is interesting. Uh, this card full back line has been very, very difficult to break down, particularly with Jimmy O'Sullivan. Uh, I'm not so sure that big men have been uh, the right answer on Jimmy O'Sullivan. He seems to like them big and tough. So, you know, that's the interesting side of it. But good supply to those. We'll to see what happens with the offer team. Yeah, Dermot is uh, having a great season. His family, of course, are steeped in the GAA, led by his father, Jerry. His brother, Colin, was uh, very unlucky enough to be playing in the minor match this afternoon, but he may get his chance to play in the final. He was out injured. Young and old are here to see the first of the Guinness Hurling semi-finals. Jimmy Barry Murphy in charge once again. He's had a couple of wonderful seasons. There were 37,000 here this time last year for what was arguably the match of the year in hurling. Will we see a repeat this afternoon? Let's hope so, Jerry, and I think if Cork are going to win, they're going to be looking for that back line, which is the same back line as played last year. They're going to be looking for these fellas to supply a really good ball to their lethal inside forward line, who really caught fire here last year against Stockley in this similar match. Ben O'Connor, and we're talking about Joe Dean and Shawnee McGrath. If they get good supply and can do the same as last year, that will certainly cause serious problems for, for Offaly. So that's, that's kind of the area where it's going to break down, I believe. We just got a quick shot there a moment ago of Joe Dooley at the tail of the Offaly Parade. And he is playing today in his 10th All-Ireland Hurling semi-final, which is quite a record. He's 36 years of age now. This is his 17th season, plenty of experience. And he had such a good year last year, looking for scores this afternoon. It'll be a big task for the fourth captain, Fergal Ryan, to deny him. So then, we know that Offaly have won the toss. They've been saying during the week, you don't become a bad player or become a bad team in just a couple of months. They were champions just two years ago against the reigning champions. Aksanish, Shahar on the field. at their backs for the opening 35 minutes they are playing into the goal at the hill 16 end willie barrett from tipperary is the man in charge the midfield pairing pat ryan and derek barrett for cork Ger oakley and johnny dooley in the middle for offaly who will get the first of the all ireland final places straight away it's uh, derek barrett Aimed down towards Shawnee McGrath. Now Claffey trying to go in and close him down. Kevin Martin is number seven. They get it back towards Timmy McCarthy. Likes to solo the ball. Looking for something here. There's the solo. Still Timmy McCarthy bursting his way through. There's support around there. Alan Brown's available. Well blocked down. Brian Wheeler had managed to get it away, but that out of danger. Back with Ben O'Connor. And that's the first point of the match. Ben O'Connor from Newton Shandrum. Incessant pressure and it finally paid off. Alan Brown prodding it inside and Ben O'Connor picked it up, beat the attempted block of Simon Wheelahan. Stephen Byrne is the goalkeeper here playing in his 16th championship match. Oh, how been? Wonderful catch, beating Johnny Pilkington to it. The early pressure coming from the All-Ireland champions. 
Timmy McCarthy. Shotty McGraw was around as well. Here comes McGraw taking on Keenan who is struggling. Tight angle. He's put it wide. The two attacks so far producing just one score. This was a great run by Shorty McGrath. Keenan was really struggling for pace there. Well, Cork will be hoping to put a lot of pressure on that full back line because too many goals have been conceded by the Offaly back line in recent games. That's a great catch. Brian Corcoran beating Gary Hannafy. Delivering the clearance, difficult one for McGrath to keep in. A pitch which is about five metres longer today, and several metres wider as well. The ball will be thrown in, I think, at the end of all of that. Now Claffey picking himself up. And Joe, could I say, it's just right that the pitch should be improved. And uh, I mean, you don't put the back piece off a chest table. It's very, very important that the pitch is the right size, and it's great to see it today. Still the pressure on the backs of Offaly. Johnny Dooley was trying to get that one up. Driven away with difficulty by Brian Whelahan. Referee in there to whistle. Spotting the foul and it's going to be a free for Cork. One thing I'll say about the pitch, and we walked it before the game, it's a tiny bit soft and spongy at the other end of the field. That's the goal which has been guarded by Donald O'Cusack right now. The free will be taken by Joe Dean. He measures it well. Joe Dean's first free then producing a score for him. So now that's two goals and 59 points he scored in Championship Fair. The Offaly management looking on intently. Derek Barrett trying to break this away from Johnny Dooley. You can be certain he'll be told to stay very close to Dooley. Here's Dean, still getting away from Keenahan, and he's put it over the bar. Earlier indications that he's got the beating of the Offaly number three. He made up a lot of space on him there, Ger, in a couple of yards. He was gone four yards inside, you know, a very short distance. Uh, ominous if he gets a lot of space. Stephen Byrne dropping it towards left half forward this time. Gary Hannafy went across towards it. Missed by a high beam. Johnny Dooley's chasing it after it. Pilkington's there as well. Here comes Johnny Pilkington. First point of the match for Offaly. The great mark to Johnny Pilkington from Byrne. Producing that score, linking up there well with Johnny Dooley. Dooley with a little flick outside. There was space, there was latitude, and there was accuracy from Pilkington. Donald Kuzak, it's his eighth big match today. Only conceded one goal in the championship last year, and that was from a free. This year, however, four have gone past him. That's a great catch by, Der by uh, Fergal McCormack, and then he takes too many steps with it and moves around and stays too long on the ball. And for overholding, the referee says free up to Offaly. Actually, on the puck out, I noticed that Gary Hannafy is coming out of centre-back, coming all the way back into the half-back line, and leaving Brian Corcoran on his own. Obviously, Offaly is trying to get as many men behind the ball for the Cork puck out as possible. Brian Wheeler had to take this. Score of 1-6, of course, in the All-Ireland final two years ago. Great ball inside. Cork defending valiantly. That's John Brown. Good little block of it. Still, it comes out towards Wayne Sherlock. Down towards Fergal McCormack, Joe Erity's in there, so too Kevin Martin to help out. Ger Oakley driving it back in again. John Ryan missing the stick, hand passing it back. Pilkington trying to steady himself, half blocked by O'Halpin, goes through. Beautifully inside towards Michael Dignan. Nicely outside to Gary Hanafe, and that should be another. That's an excellent Oakley point, that's the way they play. Playing it around and keeping their heads, an excellent Oakley point. They've taken a couple of minutes just to find their feet. But Michael Dignan played it across beautifully, and there was the waiting Gary Hannafy, and the two Burmen of the half forward line have now scored. Here comes Joe Oakley, challenged by Pat Ryan. It's Oakley against Ryan, that's the midfield battle. Barrett, on the other hand, has Johnny Dooley to uh, try and tie up. Full back came out to commit himself there, swept away by Fergal Ryan. Here comes Johnny Dooley. 
Going way back there is Joe, his brother. An easy one for Donal Cusa, but it counts as a scoring chance. Way up in the air went Joe Errity. Back. Once again it comes towards a half being half blocked by Brian Wheelahan. Here's his brother, Simon. I think a lot happier when he's playing in the corner just behind his uh, illustrious brother. The Wheelahan's against the Corpin on this side of the field. In the end, McCormick, jersey pulled, and it's a free in. Actually, I think it was picked off the ground first by uh, Fergie McCormick. If it's, I, I, I just imagined it was. And I think Brian Wheelahan was signalling that it was certainly picked up and uh, perhaps even a throw. Well, I did pick it up off the stick, but the jersey ben was pulled. Ben O'Connor actually picked it off the ground. So it's a free, just outside the 45-metre line. Dean to take. Nicely struck between the posts. Another one for Joe Dean. Two frees taken, he's got two points, and it's four points to two. Happy Cork fans up on Hill 16. Barrett against Johnny Dooley once again, breaks off the hand of Dooley this time. Down to Alan Brown. Diagonally across, intended for McGrath. Dean coming out anticipating. Keenahan well away from goal, unable to get a good challenge in, and that's another one. Radar light finding the range this afternoon. They're going to have to do something about this, because uh, that's two balls to Joe Dean. All the space in the world and taps him over the bar. That can't continue if Cork are going to, if uh, Offaly are going to stay in this game. Keenan really in trouble. He's been that way from the word go. Nearly eight minutes gone. Hanafy coming out, but he's beaten for it by Brian Corcoran. Corker really fired up. None of the complacency that some people were, I think, concerned about. Some of their fans, certainly. There's McGrath, impishly taking it away from Niall Claffey. Offaly's inside defensive line in trouble, serious trouble. But this time it comes out to Ger Oakley. Johnny Pilkington misses it. It gives a chance to a Halpine. Great skill. Picking out Pat Ryan inside. Plenty of support around. Great block by Ger Oakley. Rain comes teeming down. Back once again towards Ryan. Spills loose to Timmy McCarthy against Kevin Martin, against Joe Errity. Alan Brown running into the challenge of Errity. Here he is once again. The Black Rock man, one of four Black Rock men in this team. Simon Wheelahan down on his hands and knees, pressurised by Dean. The referee saw some pushing, and it's going to be a free out to Offaly. This is what happened once again, just moments ago there. And, uh, well, Joe Dean appealing. Simon Wheelahan, I think, intimating that his hand was held. And the rain is really lashing down right now. Maybe that's a good sign, Joe. Last year with a great game in the rain here. That's right. That's Gary Hannafy. And that's over the bar. Great point. Two for Hannafy now. Well, I think Brian Corcoran will be aware already he's got a big task on his hands here against Hannafy. Well, I think the ad in the paper for this match, indicating what time you should come in and so on, also says that you should bring rain wear. Plenty of rain gear required. Alan Brown, in towards Ben O'Connor, missed by Brian Wheelahan initially. Kevin Martin, here comes Simon Wheelahan. A little block on it, but it still reaches Ger Oakley. Up towards Michael Dignan, can he get the measure of John Brown? Brown fouls him, it's a free for Offaly. This is where they can put just one between them. Still... The Offaly player, John Brown, has his uh, number ticked by referee Willie Barrett. And it's Michael Dignan who was down injured all this while. This is what led to all of that. Brown against uh, Dignan, deemed to have pulled back the number 13. Um, Joe, with guys with hamstrings and injuries like this, this is the kind of a day that doesn't suit them. Brian Whelan's carrying a bit of an injury, so is Michael Dignan. And uh, the pitch gets very greasy and, and, and can, you know, exacerbate hamstring and muscle type problems like that so hopefully he's okay yeah he was an injury worry going into this just seem to uh, see Brian Wheelahan there say to 
Gary Hannafy a little while ago to go up and catch the ball against Brian Corcoran, feeling that he has the ability to do so. Well, actually, on the first ball that was tucked between them, he pulled, and Brian Corcoran caught it over his head. So I think that's a very good idea to change, because he caught two of them out of the last three balls. Johnny Dooley should get this one. And it goes inside the left-hand post. Johnny Dooley, the team captain from Ser Kieran's in Clarine in Offaly. 12 points in the semi-final. Almost a one-man show against Derry. Uh, Offaly's game plan is obvious that Gary Hannafy's coming back for the puck out and leaving Dermot O'Sullivan on his own. There's uh, Hannafy not too far from the action, but this time it runs on to the other number 11, Fergal McCormick. Dropping in towards that goal area. Johnny McGuire nearly got a stick to him. Here comes Dean. Blocked brilliantly by Claffy. Away by Kevin Martin. That was really dangerous. Johnny Dooley sweeping it downfield. Now Hannafy making his way backwards. But his man gets it. It's Brian Corcoran coming out. Thundering forward. Johnny Pilkington's racing after him. The rain is easy. There's a good interception. Johnny Dooley, the man who got the tip on that one. Wayne Sherlock to another wing back, this time the offlay left half back Kevin Martin, Hannafy wins the catch this time, he was up against Fergal Ryan Donalo Cusack huge clearance, down towards Alan Brown well Alan Brown will be hoping to get scores but he also be hoping to deny this man possession, that's Brian Wheelahan his clearances really can inspire the forward players there's O'Halpine, clever passing around the field Brian Corcoran, a huge one in towards McGrath. Taken well by the goalkeeper, but partly blocked in the way out, Stephen Byrne. Simon Wheelahan was coming to his aid. Ben O'Connor was in to uh, create havoc. The cornerback has it. Kicked into safety, it was aware it might be hooked. Pilkington had got a stick to it. Back it comes towards Derek Barrett. The Cove man charging through the heart of the offly defence, sending it out to Timmy McCarthy, stumbling in the slippery side right now. Cappy was being dragged back, and it's got to be a free out for Offaly. The match has been played at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, and it's strange, you see, uh, Joe Dooley is coming way out the field. Uh, brave man for his age to be coming out here to take on all that much space, but he is, he's playing very far out, maybe just two inside. They're bringing Brian Whelan across to take this free. The only current player, of course, playing the game to get into the team of the millennium. That's a huge one up towards John Ryan. They try to sneak it in along the end line, but can't do so. A puck out is the end result. Jimmy Barry Murphy up on his feet once again. Well aware, whatever about the public down in Cork, feeling that this was an easy win, or would be an easy win. Jimmy, I realise it, certainly wouldn't. They remember that great match last year. There's Dean, and that's beautifully in again. When he gets the ball, there is simply no stopping him. He's a terrific player. Five shots on the target, five points now by Joe Dean. Offaly are going to have to move there, it's three points in 14 minutes. Well, what are the options, I wonder, with Kevin Keenahan now really struggling? This is in towards Hanafy. Joe Dooley. He had support just ahead of him, but couldn't thread it through as far as Michael Dignan. Oakley trying to break it down, kicking it forward. Here comes Brendan Murphy. One of the best finds of the year so far. Digna trying to hook it over the cornerback's head. Back in there by Johnny Pilkington, but easy for the goalkeeper. Donalo Cusack. Plenty of time to look up, pick out players. He was trying to pick out Fergal McCormick, but instead it runs on to Kevin Martin. Beyond Brendan Murphy this time. In by Joe Dooley. Hannafy playing it along the ground. Swept away once again by O'Halpy. Just in that last little bit of action, great to see so much ground hurling. Here's Kevin Martin, one-handed. Back to Johnny Dooley. Here comes Brian Wheelahan. Hannity again putting up his hand. It's John Brown this time, winning the race. Here's Johnny Dooley. 
Kevin Martin denied. Great steal that time by Fergal McCormick. Here comes Ben O'Connor. Once again, it's Jodine coming way out from goal, getting a lot of possession, dragging the full back out. And that's the first one he's missed. Well, whether they put it in high or low to him, he is certainly a menacing figure for the other, the other full-back. What would you do? Well, at this stage, I mean, you have no alternative. I mean, you can continue on as you want, but uh, the facts are there before you. It's not working very well. So some alternative has to be made. Where it is, I wouldn't be quite certain. But maybe a faster man is going to be required to handle him at this stage. Here comes Timmy McCarthy. Oakley's after him. And he still held up out there. The forwards will want the ball in pretty fast. Here comes Pat Ryan. Going for the score himself. The umpires look at it and decide that it's gone wide. It's Cork's third wide of the match. Just over 17 minutes gone. Well, once again, it's turned out to be a very enjoyable semi-final. Gary Hannafy attempting to catch that one, back in by Derek Barrett. Here's Alan Brown sweeping it into Joe Dean. Keenan trying to get tight, tighter. But it's next to impossible. Dean on the front of his back, waiting for assistance. The reinforcements come late. Keenan trying to win possession against Fergal McCormack. Joe Eric is in there to challenge as well, but the foul is committed, and it's a free down to Cork. So they give away another free. And this is only going to be about 45 metres out. But it really is a, a torrid afternoon so far for Kevin Keenahan. Well, in fairness, Kieran's. in fairness, Kevin Keenahan has been a great servant of Ockley Hurling. And he's just caught a bit for space there. And uh, maybe he'll play himself back into it again. But it's not easy for him. And it's the one serious area that, that Ockley will have to do it at the back. That free by Dean gets inside the post. The left-hand post this time. And he's put it over, and already he has scored six points out of Cork's total of seven. They know where the danger is coming from. Breaking down this time from Johnny Pilkington towards Michael Dignan. In towards that freshly sodded area. Seeking out Johnny Dooley, but he's been well marshaled so far by Derek Barrett. Comes back to Ger Oakley. He's been getting on the ball time and again. And here's his chance, and he puts it over the bar. That's what Offaly needs, Joe. They need fellas like Ger Oakley. Other fellas besides Brian Hill and Johnny Pitt and Michael Egg to stand up and be counted. They need those fellas driving him forward at this stage. Well, this is where he got the space. A couple of cork men after him, but they couldn't catch him. So there are two between the teams. Erity driving it back, stopped by Sean O'Gohalpine, playing well against Pilkington. Fergal McCormack sending it in dangerously, just a little too much pace on it. John, Johnny Pilkington needs to, to up his performance too on, uh, on Sean O'G. Sean O'G is winning a lot of vital ball, and uh, Johnny needs to curb his threat as well. So faces on the sideline a study in concentration broke him down this time towards Gary Hanafi setting off in the direction of the court goal the hand pass for Joe Dooley that's all he needs he's got a point first real chance for Joe and he's put the minimum between the teams this is where Gary Hanafi won that ball from uh, Brian Corcoran took it on delivered it to Joe Dooley that was enough So a one-point game. Cher Oakley, one-handed, taken here by Brian Wheelahan, much happier at right half-back. Brendan Murphy trying to drag it forward. Manny's marking right now, wins that ball. Fergal Ryan, Cork's captain, down towards Shawnee McGrath, trying to let it run inside. It does so successfully. Chaffee's after him. Still McGrath. And McGrath has put it wide. The umpires had a critical think about it. No argument from Shawnee. 
yet to score in this match. In fact, just two court players have scored so far. Dean and O'Connor. This was the latest chance, and it fell to McGrath. That's why you keep thinking if Offaly can do something about Dean. They're not looking too bad at the back. Here comes Derek Barrett. Played most of his hurling in the uh, wing up to now. Wayne Sherlock. Down towards Ben O'Connor. Wheeler had tried to take it away from him. It runs on to Dean, the danger man. The hand pass to Alan Brown. Well, it was a good scoring chance. There was a late challenge coming in to maybe cause him to lose his concentration, but he shakes the head ruefully. He knows he should have scored. Well, this goalkeeper has been very busy so far. The longer this goes and the, and, and the longer that Offaly can stay with them, you know, you give them a great chance if they can stay with them. No goals in the match so far. Again, that one goes down towards Hanafi. He's causing problems now for Brian Corcoran since he was given that instruction to go in and use your hand. Kevin Martin. Into the corner towards Joe Dooley. Was there a little push? There was. By the 36-year-old. A look of total innocence and a shake of the head. The Offaly fans jeering that decision, thinking it was an incorrect one. But Willie Barrett is the man who's in charge. And Cork are bringing out their goalkeeper to take this free. Willie Barrett from County Tipperary. That free is down towards Dean. He seems to come out the field just for that one. Derek Barrett tries the shot. A real hit and hope one. And it's gone wide. And Cork now have seven wides to go with the seven points they've scored so far. Dr. Con Murphy there on the right-hand side, Ted Owens alongside him. Towards Brendan Murphy, won by Sherlock instead. Pat Ryan, the man from Sarsfields. Ooh, it's driven back well, first time by Brian Whelan. Towards Michael Dyglin against John Brown. Dyglin is still, I think, troubling, or suffering a little bit from that to hamstring trouble. Releasing Pilkington, and Pilkington has found it beautifully. Nice point by Johnny Pilkington, that's two he's got. And the sides are level now for just the first time. Cork seven, Offaly seven. Good shoulder, Dagen gets it back. Pilkington kept on moving. And from an acute angle, he sent it over the crossbar. And there's a Cork man down injured. It may be Wayne Sherlock is down. Yes, Sherlock from Black Rock is the one who is receiving the attention. Wayne Sherlock today, man of the match, of course, against the Limerick, but today playing in his eighth championship game. One of the four Black Rock men included. They were the Cork County champions last year after a gap of some 14 seasons. Brian Corcoran has discarded the black helmet. Instead of the rain, it's now become quite hot and humid. Joe Dooley has switched, it seems, onto the 40 just for the puck out. As Hanafi goes back once again, it's come down towards Alan Brown. Simon Wheeler going across, trying to gather, deciding to play it along the ground instead. Pat Ryan. Oakley never more than a yard or so away from him, but Pat Ryan has swung on the left-hand side and played it delightfully over the bar. Cork are back in the lead once again. This is where it came back to the Cork midfielder, who surprisingly was omitted, of course, for the start of the Munster final. Offaly's game plan is good, Gerard putting Gary Hanafy. Brian Corcoran has discarded the helmet now in the hope of getting better vision, I imagine. Well, there they come again. Again, it's broken. Derek Barrett going back to help out, in towards Ben O'Connor. Already scored one point in the match. But only two of the Cork forwards have actually scored. We mentioned Dean many, many times with six. And three of them coming from freeze. Well, this is the difficult part of the surface now, which has been resodded. 
it still hasn't absolutely totally knitted as one would expect in the minor game they brought it in onto the actual uh, path that wasn't surfaced and it's not a bad idea it's got up well nonetheless swept away first time by John Brown from Michael Dagnan Dagnan gets it back once more Sean O'Gohalpine Joe Dulic chasing after him Oakley coming out to try and meet this one Martin winning the race Wayne Sherlock recovered from injury beating Brendan Murphy to this one here comes Timmy McCarthy from the middle of the field in beyond Dean this time and that's a very good take indeed by Simon Wheelahan from Burr very tidy corner back play anticipating that the fullback might have needed the help Sean Ogo Halpine towards the other wing back quick change of direction however to Alan Brown Wheelahan is on him of course this afternoon that's Brian Wheelahan a real battle in there and the referee I think will throw the ball in Johnny Pickington is going to have to do a lot more on uh, Sean Og. Sean Og was a beautiful little passage of play where he played the ball around the ground and picked it up himself. But he's getting too many clearances in. By my estimation, he's cleared about eight balls so far out of there. That's too much, even though Johnny's got a few points. He's got to be cudging the half-back line for Offley's sake. Johnny Dooley knocking it out into the centre. Oakley is really showing he's battling qualities this afternoon. There's Pilkington chasing across there. Player on the ground was Derek Barrett. Pilkington firing it up towards John Ryan, the full forward marked by Dermot O'Sullivan Gary Hanafy now applying pressure a couple of players after him was pulled down that time by Dermot O'Sullivan yeah. on Hanafy and he's going to be called across and I wouldn't be surprised if there's the first yellow card yeah, of the match it, it looked a bad shot actually just from her eyes but, uh, see it again it looked a bad shot so they're calling across well at least Willie Barrett is calling across Dermot O'Sullivan from Cloyne and indeed it is a yellow card first of the game yeah Dermot dishes it out in there a lot you know during matches and I mean it's just only fair that, that, that he should get a card for that because Gary Hanfi was running straight at him there was an incident of course you at know? the start of the Limerick match as well that's a bad shot that is a bad shot there's no question the free will be taken by Johnny Dooley this to level up the match He's done it. A second point from a free for Johnny Dooley, the midfielder, and it's Cork 8, Offaly 8, and about uh, six and a half minutes now to go to half time. Might be a little bit of injury time because of the injury a little while ago to Wayne Sherlock. One handed away by Ger Oakley. Pilkington stopped by Sean O'Gohalpine, but uh, not completely, and Gary Hanafy was able to take the loose ball on to. John Ryan. Here comes John Brown. Pat Ryan now. Steadying himself. Dropping it all the way. Should be the goalkeepers. Good work by Stephen Byrne. Showing a very cool nerve. Now Claffey switching across. Denied possession there by Alan Brown. Fergal McCormack firing it in, but he's put it wide. Yeah, it's hard to understand the Cork midfield on occasions there. They're not supplying particularly good ball. Joe Dean is, is way on top on the inside. The plenty of space inside, and they're hitting balls soft into the goalkeeper's hand. You'd imagine they keep it down and give their inside forwards who are going particularly well a chance. Well, Dermot O'Sullivan is now going to have to be very, very careful in there, having got the yellow card already. And there hasn't been too much pressure on him so far in the match. Even though the sides are level. Here comes pressure. Brendan Murphy, Sullivan goes out, takes the ball this time. Referee says perfectly fairly. It's a huge clearance. It lifts the team, it lifts the crowd. Kevin Keenan. This should be Alan Brown's and his. Pressure is on him, but he still gets it in beyond Dean. But again, it's what Liam Griffin was just talking about. Poor ball into the inside line. Yes, and this can win Matt. If you get a, a player on top, I think it's always wise to play him, but it's easy to see that from here, of course. Let's call it fair for Dermot O'Sullivan. That was a hell of a good tackle and a fair one. And, uh, you know, we can call him in the wrong, but we should call him in the right as well. Derek Barrett touches it down, but only as far as Johnny Pilkington. And Pilkington, from a huge distance out, has put it over the bar and awfully have the lead. 
First time they've been in front, and Johnny Pilkington has now got three points, even though he's on one of the best players on the court team, Sean O'Gohalpine. That was an absolute beauty from a huge distance out. Four minutes to the break. Derek Barrett. The umpires say this time that it's beautifully measured, nicely judged. And Derek Barrett gets his first point of the game and the teams are level yet again. He waited for it to come down for him. There was pressure on him, but he got away from the uh, opposition and struck it delightfully inside the right-hand post. Here they go again. Centre-back, centre-forward. But this time it's broken down to Timmy McCarthy. In beyond Keenahan, Dean's about, but so too is the other cornerback that Simon Wheeler had switched across to left cornerback. Ben O'Connell has gone across also. Here comes Pat Ryan. Oh, please, after him. Ryan falls. Setting it up here for Ben O'Connor. And that one has gone wide. But credit the pressure that was put on Ben O'Connor. It's the tenth wide, however, by Cork. And there's the awfully management down there. Pat Fleury, Jer Coughlin, and of course Pat Cleary as well, all in there. You get the impression with Offaly, if, if they can keep Johnny uh, Pilkington to hold that position, if Johnny Dooley can come back into the game a bit more, and you imagine that he might, uh, Offaly have a very, very good chance. Just to mention of those wides once again, I said 10 for Cork, that's correct, but Offaly have only got one. And the team's level. Joe Dooley dropping it in, but... Uh, that becomes their second wide of the game. Here comes Clappy. Drop hitting that one away. Johnny Pilkington. Now oh, they hurry up. Sean O'Gohan has been went flying. Brian Whelehan inside towards John Ryan. Diarmuid O'Sullivan is a judge to have dragged him back and it's going to be a free in. And a very easy chance. Yeah, is that harsh this time? Uh, is that harsh this time? I don't know. I didn't quite see it. Um. Well, the referee has made his decision. Diarmuid is very disappointed. The Offaly fans cheering their team. They're well outnumbered, however, in the uh, stadium here. Huge cork support. So the free to be taken by Johnny Dooley. Two frees converted so far. This is just over 20 metres out. Two frees taken. Two points scored. He's made it three from three. And awfully lead by ten points to nine. And if Johnny gets going in open play in the second half... We could change this game around, I can tell you. This is what happened here just a moment ago. And did he knock John Ryan out of the way with his left hand? That, I think, is why the referee gave the free. McCormack across here to Alan Brown. Whelan is not tight enough. And that goes inside the right post. Alan Brown's first point. There is nothing to divide these teams. The All-Ireland Champions of last year and the All-Ireland Champions of 98. Level once again. Level now for the fourth time, thanks to Alan Brown. So in the last minute of this first half, a ding-dong battle. Awfully in trouble in their full back line early on, but they've retained their composure and their cohesion elsewhere. Ben O'Connor winning the free. A late chance then for Joe Dean. Hopefully he'll be happy with this, Jared, that they've gone so well so far, for so long. They will, be, they will definitely be happy, and they'll regroup at half-time. The scoring chances make interesting reading. 21 for Cork so far, 15 for Otley. Dean with six points so far. Just a scratch for doing the man like that, taking the freeze. No part in our game. Ball. No part in our game. Well, he's made it 11 points to 10. And 
Jimmy Barry and the fellow selectors will appreciate the battle they have on their hands for the second 35 minutes if they're to reach the All-Ireland final. Awfully have other ideas. Gary Hanafy, from his stick, it comes down to Derek Barrett. He's been battling and working incredibly hard. This time in towards Ben O'Connor, runs on. Timmy McCarthy's after it, late chance perhaps for the Rebel County. Knocking it back to Joe Dean, the, ever the danger man. Couple of Offaly players trying to dispossess him, but even Joe Dean, from an impossible angle, still manages to get it beautifully over the crossbar and between the posts and make it 12 points to 10. Yes, and whatever Offaly do, they're going to have to make a decision at half-time, one way or the other, and if they're happy enough to go like this, it may cost them the match. If they can nullify that threat a bit, it could win it for them. That's going to be the big decision. The final whistle of the first half, a lip-roaring contest. And the All-Ireland champions have a two-point lead. Joe Dean has scored eight of their 12 points so far. He certainly has the measure of uh, Kevin Keenan in the full back line. He is ever the danger. Will Offaly change their tactics? Because at the break, it's caught 12, Offaly 10. And let's go down to Marty Morrissey. Terry Coughlin, uh, awfully selector. Are you pleased with your first half performance? Well, we're reasonably pleased, Marty, to win a half time two points down. It's fast and it's furious, and we're having some problems in our back line, but we're reasonably happy to win with two points down at half time. Joe Dean is a major source of concern, uh, and obviously Kevin Keenan is having problems marking. Yeah, absolutely, like from the onset there, Joe is very fast. He's getting, he is getting great quality ball. All he's getting is very low, and they're out in front of him, and it's suiting him, and we're finding it difficult to close down that situation. Any change of tactics uh, would you expect for the second half? We're certainly going to have to look at, at, at that situation where that low ball is coming in to Joe Dean. It's coming in and it's causing, it's not the ball that everybody knows that Kevin Keenan suits Kevin Keenan. Kirk Hoffman, thank you very much. Best of luck. A handy win for Cork. No way in this All-Ireland semi-final. Analysis of a very enjoyable first half after a commercial break. It's half-time in the Guinness All-Ireland Hurling semi-final between Cork and Offaly. Up for grabs, a place in that All-Ireland final against either Galway or Kilkenny, who will meet in the second semi-final next week. A look at the statistics from the first half of that a very entertaining 35 minutes of hurling. Cork are leading by 2 points, 12 points to 10. Uh, they've had 5 frees against Offaly's 6. 10 wides for Cork against just the 2 for Offaly and just the 1 yellow card in that against the Cork fullback Jeremy Joe Sullivan in the first 35 minutes. Well, Pete Finnerty and Tomás McGahey with me on the panel here this afternoon. Gentlemen, it's, it's easy to say that Kevin Keenahan is having a nightmare on Joe Dean, which he is. The question is, what are they going to do about it? Well, it, it, Joe Dean is, is, he isn't your typical full forward, Michael. He's, he's not the guy that you're going to lob high balls into all the time, which would suit the play of Kevin Keenahan. What he's doing, he's dropping 20, 30, 40 yards out from goal, and when the ball is breaking, he's very, very quick on his feet. And it, it doesn't give, give Kevin Keenan a chance. If I was awfully selectors at the moment, I would maybe put the likes of Simon Whelan, Whelan in the top of Joe. He's been ha having a fantastic first half himself. He would actually read Joe Dean from the front, and he would, he, he would be front of those breaking balls, and uh, first of those breaking balls, and cut out the supply. Um, certainly, within that first half period, it was a one-man show by Joe Dean to score eight points. I mean, here, here we see a ball up the wing by Fergal McCormick. This is what I'm talking about, 20 to 30 yards open goal, and tis the turn of feet really is catching Kevin Keane, and he's going one way and shooting with the other one. And it's a good sign of, I mean, give credit to Jodine as well, it's a good sign of a good hurler. He's been able to score off left-hand side and been able to score off his right, and within that first half period, if he got more supply to ball, I'm, cer he, I'm certain he would have done more damage. Um, I'm, from a Cork point of view, I suppose, like, they haven't created much as a goal-scoring threat inside in the full forward line as well, because Jodine is moving out, out the field. If Joe comes out, somebody maybe must go in behind at that stage to take up the full forward berth. Well, we, we wondered going into this match, Pete Finnerty, whether Offaly would be up for it. We have our answer to that now. We know they are, whether they win or lose the match. Uh, this is not an issue at this stage. And they've been doing well. I mean, fellas like Johnny Pilkington have been working very hard there, scored three points in play and doing their bit. Yeah, Johnny Pilkington was one of the players who played well against Derry, and he generally plays midfield, but against Derry he scored three or four good points, identical to what he has scored t today. And what uh, Pat Brody was getting from Danny Pilkin in midfield is no way as good as what he's getting today from him. He scored three points from, from play. But you look over the far side and you see Brendan Murphy, who hasn't contributed at all. Here, here we see one of Johnny's points. Just wait now. Watch the break that came out from, from the midfielders. And he's, he's in inside forward. Just backed out the field, 
picked it up and put it over the bar and that, that gave Offaly the lead at that stage and, and it, it was great for Offaly to lead in the game at least now they believe that they're good enough that, that they're able to take this court team we did doubt Offaly's ability at the beginning of the game but we always knew what type of horrors they were mm -hmm. we knew they didn't lack the, pa they lacked the passion earlier on in the year but th they know this is knockout this is 70 minutes away now it's only 35 minutes away there's two points down they'll come out in the second half and they're going to be fired up we told one another before the game we could stay with them now we're with them it's half time take Joe Dean out of the game mm -hmm. he's eight points scored for Cork yeah. there's only four points scored by the rest of the Cork That's team right. Johnny yeah. Dooley has scored three yeah. points on his own now awfully if they can keep the pressure on Dean and as Tomas said mm -hmm. put Simon Wheel in on him mm -hmm. put somebody who's of the same stature who will be sliding the same way in the wet conditions Kelly Keenan is too big are you surprised they didn't make that move I mean it's been so obvious to everybody I am because um, Simon Wheel where he's playing well Joe Dean is contributing more than Simon Whelan mm -hmm. is to the game and he's more dangerous as a forward than Simon Whelan is ever going to be as a cornerback for Offaly. So I would, I would yeah. sacrifice Whelan's game and I'd put him on Joe Dean and I'd say to, to him, look, at, if you don't hit another ball for the rest of the day, you've done a great job for us. Kevin Keenan has, he's too big a man to be able to stay with, with Dean and they're leaving a big hole yeah. in front of Dean. Bergen McCormick hit yeah. that ball mm -hmm. into Dean. He's leaving a big gap in front of him and that's where Dean is living. He's coming out like a little rabbit onto the ball, quick turn over the bar. Very little Keenan can do. Puts Whelan on him, we'll see what happens. A real issue here though, Tomas, is the next five minutes of the second half because Cork do lead by two points. If Cork tag on a point or two, I get the feeling that Offaly are going to chase this game then for the 35 minutes and not quite make it, as indeed happened last year. Yeah, but it isn't all one-way traffic for Cork, Michael, at the moment, because I, I think Cork will, will need to see big improvements in the half-forward line. I mean, we got a point from Alan Brown, but they're not, they're not actually gaining parity out there. I mean, Brian Whelan is hurling very, very well there. I mean, Joe Erty has kind of stopped Fergal McCormick from yeah. dominating from Puckles and things like that as well, and Kevin Martin has come into his own as well, so they need to up their game in the half-forward line considerably as well. Um, the one good thing from Offaly, I suppose, is the return they're getting from Gary Hannafy at centre forwarding is Brian Cochran. If Brian Cochran doesn't win it, um, certainly Gary, Gary Hannafy is, is close enough to him that he's going to win possession himself. And he's won two or three great balls off of Brian. And what he's actually done, he's turned him, took him on, and hand passed the ball out to, to the legs of Johnny Pippen to get their scores. And it's proved very, very effective. And he can, if he can keep this up, and Offaly can keep the pressure on Cork, who knows? I mean, nine minutes to go in last year's uh, semi final, Offaly were actually winning by two points, and, five, and Cork got five points on the trot. Cock have finished the last few games very, very strongly. It remains to be seen whether they can take on the points now at the start of the second half or let, let Offaly back into it. Well, Joe Dooley there we saw briefly. He's contributed a point to the first half. I think we should make a brief mention also, Pete, of uh, Ger Oakley at midfield, who certainly looked very up for this game. He did indeed, and as, as we highlighted earlier on, the contribution that John, Johnny Pilkington has, has made at wing forward, where Ger Oakley has scored a point from play as well. And if you looked at the two mid fielders from Offaly would say that Joe Oakley is actually playing better than Johnny Dooley at the moment. Now if Johnny Dooley comes into the game, if Brendan Murphy comes into the game, if Gary Hannafy continues to dominate at centre back and if John Ryan can keep the pressure on Dermot um, O'Sullivan at, at, at full back and hold the ball in there, maybe Joe Dooley will latch on to somebody. A goal could po possibly decide this game wh whoever gets it. Oh, a goal would certainly put a, a cat amongst the pigeons. We saw, saw Sean O'Gahalpin briefly there hoping to make it a family double in the All-Ireland Final this year. But Willie, that's the big question. Let's go back to Liam and to Ger. Yes, it's uh, 12 points to 10. And we're really looking forward to the second half. Willie Barrett about, about to restart it. So, 35 minutes to determine who reaches this year's All-Ireland Hurling Final. Shawnee McGrath hasn't scored so far, up against Niall Claffey. Sending it in there towards G J Joe Dean. No change in the marking arrangements. Dean. Back towards Timmy McCarthy, he ran out of space completely. The pick-up here is very neatly done by Ben O'Connor. Good partial block there by Simon Wheelahan. Ben O'Connor trying to make some headway, and Keenahan gets it into his hand and makes a great clearance downfield. That might do his confidence a lot of good, but he's still marking Joe Dean. Here comes Shawnee McGrath. What a pacey performer. Two of them after him. And he's put it just to the left, and he's put it wide. It was a chance. For the better chance a second ago, Ben O'Connor could have given the ball back to Shawnee McGrath, who's completely on his own. You know, it's a, a, simple, a simple point. This is where he was skipping by Niall Claffey. Kevin Martin was racing after him as well. But he put the ball wide in any case. He's had three shots at the target so far, but has yet to make his first point. Oh, Halpine. Now Johnny Dooley. Can he really lift his team towards Joe? 
Virgil Ryan left it behind him, but not so his clubmate Wayne Sherlock. Good hurling by Sherlock. Errity batting it down beautifully like a tennis player. Comes back from Dooley. Claffy out to Gary Hannafy. Continuing to make quite an impact. Dermot O'Sullivan, our first time for the ball. He was stripped, and it's going to be a free out for Cork. Actually, he's playing from in front this time, more so in the first few minutes. Well, this is where he got there, ahead of John Ryan. There was a little tangle of legs, down he went, free out to Cork. I'd say he was told to play from in front in the second half. He was behind his man in the, in, in the first half for a few dangerous-looking breaks. This is in there towards the inside forward line, but uh, cleared away once again by Kevin Keenan. That's two good clearances at the start of the half. And while we're mentioning championship, let's mention uh, young team St Mary's of Rosslair. They did well today. Absolutely. So well done to them all. It was a great win today. So well done. That was the intermediate championship. This is the All Ireland series. Knocked down by Kevin Martin. Ger Oakley trying to get the ball further away. Comes out towards Dooley. Space at a premium. Interesting in the first half. There were no positional switches by either team. And that continues to be the pattern. Pat Ryan sending it beautifully into Joe Dean, but he misses it this time and Keenahan gets it away. He started a great deal better, but remember Dean has already scored eight points. Pilkington firing it down. Well, nobody whatsoever in the inside forward line. There's a huge gap, in fact, between the players running back and the goalkeeper making the clearance. McGrath trying to knock it into the path of one of the other forwards. This is Brian Corcoran. It whizzed past Pat Ryan. Up towards Ben O'Connor. Simon Wheeler and his marker. Trying to knock it over the head, but Simon Wheeler has seen that one done before. Johnny Dooley. Just two men inside waiting for it, but it's Wayne Sherlock who cuts it out. Pat Ryan picking it up. Three off men alongside him. In fact, it's Ben O'Connor. This is Pat Ryan. And that has gone to the left. Brendan Murphy's in trouble a little bit on Wayne Sherlock. In fairness, he's a young boy. He's, he's been tremendous this year in Leinster. It's very hard for him to put three or four games back to back, but he is struggling on Wayne Sherlock. There's no question about that. Brendan Murphy's a young player, as you say, one of the stars of Offaly's under-21 Leinster winning team. Indeed, I know Michael Bond was thinking about him two years ago, but he was far too young at that stage. Oakley. Here comes Derek Barrett. Thundering run forward. In towards Dean, and Keenan wins it again. He's had much the better start of the duel for the second half, which is only four and a half minutes old. He's committing himself to the ball at least now. He's attacking the ball. I mean, it's coming in a bit high, to be fair, and that's the way he likes it. Pressure outside will force the players outside to put the ball in high, and that's what, that's what Kevin Keenan needs. Hopefully to put pressure on outside. Burns free down towards Michael Dignan. Hand pass back to Gary Hannafy. Not much headway made. John Brown racing out. This time it's Derek Barrett playing a very steady game in the middle of the park. Alan Brown inside towards Shotty McGrath. Trying to round foot the defender is now Clappy. Timmy McCarthy's waiting inside and the referee has seen the holding and it's going to be a free in to court. Chance of the first point of the second half and it'll be Joe Dean who will take it. And the number of Niall Claffey has been taken by the referee for this incident here where he dragged back McGrath and there was no doubt about the free, the free or the foul. When you're a corner forward, you wake up in the middle of the night thinking about things like this because that's always what happens at corner forward. Someone drags them down. Uh, to be fair, it wasn't a malicious free, but it's a tough area inside a corner forward. And Dean makes no mistake. So he's now got nine points out of a tally of 13 for Cork. A switch in the uh, Offaly team. We've just noticed that Brendan Murphy has gone into midfield and Johnny Dooley has gone to left half forward. Let's see how that will work. This is inside towards Dagnan. Getting inside the cover of John Brown. But well taken in there by Dermot O'Sullivan. Very good full back play. Timmy McCarthy, one-handed across. Alan Brown, slow off the blocks. Instead, it is Brian Whelahan. 
A huge one dropping down there towards Joe Dooley. But the backs do well again, and it's the lion heart to deal with O'Sullivan, showing that he might make it into Larry Tompkins' team. He's on the ground, huge kick clearance. And he got a lot of bad tackles on the way out there. I think this is payback time, that's what that's called, but that's what happened. Several fellas hit him on the way out there with the stick and with the shoulder, there's no question about that. John Ryan is protesting, this is what was happening. Throw. Keep an eye, Hannafy first of all, and then he just really fell over John. John Ryan just fell over him, really. Well, I'd say he fell over with, with, with great intent. Let's put it that way, John. <laughs> well, we can watch it again here. Hannafy came across, tried to shoulder him as fairly as he could. Yeah, at this level, guys are not going to let you do what you like with them, you know? That's what happens, you know? Fellas not going to let you do what you like, and rightly so, that's part of the game. The referee has got the message, and indeed it was Gary Hannafy who gets the yellow card for what was a foul on Dermot O'Sullivan. I thought Michael Dagny should hit that last ball over the bar, Joe. Right outside, 20 yards out, straight over the bar. Uh, we have a whole five minutes of play since, and it should have been a point, and it would have put uh, Offaly just another point closer. Well, Offaly are looking for their first point of the second half, which is now nearly eight minutes old. Pat Ryan is the free-taker. In towards that busy goal area, Alan Brown's about. Runs out once again. Derek Barrett, three court men there waiting for the loose ball. They fumble it between them. Fergal McCormick trying to get it in. It's belted out by Brian Wheelhan of Offaly. Sean O'Gohalty. Timmy McCarthy. Closed down by Kevin Martin. Fed away towards Gary Hannafy. Terrific excitement. But Offaly looking for scores. Just to reassure themselves that they're still in with a huge chance. Michael Dignan, wrong footing, John Brown, difficult one for Johnny Pilkington to take, but he did well to contain it. Get it, sit in on his left-hand side, and he's put it over the bar. And that's a magnificent point. I know you can see it yourself, but that is a magnificent point, going backwards off his left hand. That's, that's why he's such a special player. After eight minutes of the second half, it was Johnny Pilkington who stepped up to get his fourth of the day, and that's four from five shots. That's not bad going. And he's dominating now with Sean Ogle, and that's going to make a difference. That's a great catch by Alan Brown. Keenan coming out, that's the kind of one he loves to see coming in his direction. Simon Wheeler, a steadier approach now by the awfully full back line. Keenan bursting out, driving it away down towards Gary Hannafy. Hannafy has uh, caused a lot of problems for Brian Corcoran in the same way that Pilkington is causing problems for all Halpin. That will give Offaly a lot of hope. It bounces off the hands of Kevin Martin. Clappy, not a very effective kick away. Here's Timmy McCarthy. Up towards Shawnee McGrath. Quick look up at the posts. Ben O'Connor has the chance to keep it in play. Simon Wheelahan over in that freshly sodded area over there. O'Connor bogged down to some extent. No pun intended. And in the end, it's going to be a line ball. But it'll be a line ball to Cork. They keep the pressure on. Give credit to, uh, to uh, Kevin Kinahan. He's made a fair effort in the second half. He's attacking the ball with a lot more venom now this than this half himself. But the Offaly backs are certainly helping our outfield players by forcing high ball in there. It's Derek Barrett who's gone across to take this. Played at left half back for most of the league. Good ball in. McCormack was about. Dean's coming in. It's broken loose and Joe Errity makes the clearance. But it's another sideline ball and more pressure on that beleaguered Offaly defence. Packed terraces in Croke Park. As I mentioned, 37,000 here last year for the semi-final. And a big, big crowd back again this afternoon. Next week, it's Galway against Kilkenny, also live on this channel. Oh, how Bean cuts it in. Coming out to meet it is Jer Oakley. Racing through Derek Barrett. And Derek Barrett has put it wide. That's 13 wides now for Cork. And that's the third of the second half. JVM and the selectors look concerned. This is Brendan Murphy, started at the wing, now in midfield. Missed by John Brown. Here comes John Ryan. The man they brought into full forward has knocked this one over the bar. 
His first point. Place for St. Reiners. He's made it 13 to 12. This was a really good piece of play by John Ryan to beat Dearman O'Sullivan for possession and score a beautiful point. Keenahan sails up into the air, misses it. Cappy gets it away. That could have been so dangerous. We'll still look for the first goal in this match if there's going to be one. McCormick blocked down brilliantly. Eric is chasing after it again. It's there for the taking. Anybody's match. Pat Ryan. Brendan Murphy's alongside him. Back to Fergal Ryan, Cork's captain. Look where Dean has come to get possession. Way out, 45 metres out. For Fergal McCormick. The shoulder from Martin. He's still got it, McCormick. Inside. Alan Brown's there. It's blocked. Comes back towards McGrath. Is there a goal chance here? Great defensive work by Offaly. Still in some trouble. Alan Brown tries to squeeze it in. And the referee, I think, is going to uh, throw the ball up to end the uncertainty. But just for a moment there, I think Cork felt they might be in for a goal. This is where Shotty McGrath was coming in. Caffey was there. Alan Brown was around as well. And in the end, it ran away from him. The goalkeeper trying to roll it up onto his stick. And the referee decides, let's throw the ball up. Fergal McCormick, Kevin Martin. They're ready to contest this one. The others should be 13 metres back. Referee that says, to heck with it, let's get on with it. Here's McCormick, hand passing it beyond Dean this time. They chase after us, Brendan Murphy who wins it back. Offaly may be about to make a change very shortly. And it's going to be a free downfield for Offaly. Michael Dykeman, the one who was fouled. Referee speaking there to the court cornerback, John Brown. I would have been a free out of it, not because John Ryan fouled uh, during those as the ball was coming in. So he was lucky that he got it before that. Cork are about to bring in Kevin Murray. He'll step into the forward line. But I caught a glimpse there somewhere of Paddy Mulher as well getting ready. <laughs> Timmy McCarthy, I would say, maybe. And it's Timmy McCarthy who makes way, you're quite right. Didn't score on the match so far, but the Castle Lions man will end his day on the bench. And McGrath has gone to McCarthy's position at wing forward with uh, Kevin Murray coming into the corner. Johnny Dooley knocking it impressively over the crossbar. This is a critical time of the game now. Often they are showing a lot of intent at the moment, and if they can keep this up and get the bit between their teeth, they're going to be hard to beat. The teams are level for the fifth time. The faithful have the faith still. Both sets of fans will believe they can win this. It's some tussle. Here's Brendan Murphy. Johnny Dooley's over there as well. Dignan got just the faintest of touches to that. Still they try to work it forward. Joe Dooley's over there. And it's Brian Corcoran who rolls it up onto the stick. Great clearance into midfield. Batted down by Brendan Murphy. Chair Oakley. There are two Corkmen after colliding. They're down on the ground. The pressure is on the court goal. And Dearman O'Sullivan makes a superb catch. Takes it in the left hand. And he's partially blocked there by Pilkington. John Ryan's after him as well. Joe Dooley also fancies the chances. But still, Dearman O'Sullivan tries to get the ball away from danger. In the end, the shot is put over the bar by Brendan Murphy, who's now starting to come into this game big time since he went to midfield. That was a very good move. It's 14 points to 13. Offaly lead. This was uh, Dermot O'Sullivan trying to get the ball away, almost on his own, but it came back to Brendan Murphy, and the Ballyshkin Achman got his first point of this All-Ireland semi-final. He could come into it much more now, you know, because that he's a great youngster, and that's exactly the kind of uh, a lift he needed at this stage. Just before that, I saw two, two court players on the ground, I presume they collided, Pat Ryan and Alan Brown, I think it was, and Pat Ryan has come off second best from that, Brown is OK, he's back at left half forward. But now there will be great concern. And it's going to be interesting, is it Mickey O'Connell? It is Mickey O'Connell who's being readied to come in. And that's where they collided. And Pat Ryan does not look the healthiest right now. He's staying in the action, however. Fergal Ryan feeding it back up there. Kevin Keenan comes out. He's taking everything second half. 
the awfully select has gambled. So far, it's come off. Here's Brian Corcoran. Nicely forward by Wayne Sherlock. And it's now Cappy. Again, he's lost the stick. He does that quite often. And Johnny Pilkington down on his hands and knees. Fergal Ryan beside him. Still, he manages to get it in, but only as far as Shadow will have been challenged by Michael Dagnan. The pass is up towards Alan Brown. Breaks away. Brian Wheelahan. In determined fashion, giving the leadership. The 98 champions looking to get back into the final, having lost the Leinster final. Ger Oakley firing it in, and it's saved by the goalkeeper. And John Wayne was right alongside him. Donald O'Cusick's clearance. Kevin Martin coming out. Taking it with great confidence, belting it back. Pilkington in there now towards the corner at this stage. With excellent, hurling all, excellent hurling all over. Yes, it really is exciting fair. Both sides giving as good as they're getting. Two championship teams, two champions of the past two years. Wayne Sherlock about to be bottled up by Michael Dyken, makes space for himself. Kevin Martin, one-handed back. Hannafin was on the ground, but he's back up quickly. No place for the faint-hearted. Inside towards Joe Dooley. Can he get another? He can. Great to see Joe play so well. Gentleman Joe, fabulous hurler. Offaly scored to Joe Dooley. That's his second point, and Offaly have a two-point lead. If the All-Ireland champions of last year are to get through, they're going to have to come from behind. But playing up again, Offaly are showing a lot of spirit now and their game plan is working, they're forcing high ball into Joe Dean, Kevin Kinnan is attacking the ball a lot more, uh, Johnny Pickington is really flying, and the move with Brendan Murphy has worked as well, so often you're going to be hard to put down at this stage. Cork in some difficulty, they haven't scored for 12 minutes. Meanwhile, Gary Hanafy has succumbed to that injury, and Dr Brendan Lee is forced to come in and attend to him, the surprising thing as well is that the Cork half forward line has moved a lot closer to their full forward line in the second half, which is surprising. Now Joe Dean is actually going off Kevin Kinahan and moving to the corner, and Alan Brown is going to full forward. So that's another psychological blow for Offaly and for Kevin Kinahan. Well, Jimmy Barry Murphy having to ring the changes. Alan Brown going into full forward, or of course he has lots of experience of playing there in the championship. Gary Hanif is going to have to just forget about it. Whatever he has, you have to do it at this stage. The puck out reaches Fergal McCormack. His side trailing. The champions in some difficulty, to put it mildly. But really, it's still anybody's game. Free into Cork. Pat Ryan about to take it. This is the first time all year Offaly have looked anyway composed, to be honest. I think everybody who knows anything about hurling knew that they were going to be up for this, and they are. And they still have a two-point lead because that has gone wide. 14 wides for Cork. Cork are now worrying. And Mickey O'Connell has just come into the action. And I think it's Pat Ryan who is making way. So the man who lost his place to Pat Ryan regains it but with just 15 minutes to go who will get that first spot in the all-ireland final that will be resolved mickey o'connell skipping away from johnny pilkington he's hoping to inspire the champions shawnee mcgrath the wide tally has been huge by cork standards in so far in this match here comes ben o'connor he took too many steps. Fair call. Remember, this was the side that scored 23 points in the Munster final. Well, Cork have been making changes in their back line, in the half back line. They brought Sean O'Gohalpine into Mark Gary Hanafy. And I've noticed that Joe Dooley is now being marked by Brian Corcoran. It hasn't been the happiest of afternoons for Corcoran. Stephen Byrne taking the free, dropping it right in. Donald O'Kilzak defending well. Steady as ever in goal. A goal could turn this year. That's exactly it. Kevin Murray misses it. Alan Brown's tried to take it up onto the stick. 
but Offaly have got renewed heart. Only two wides in the first half. They were being beaten solidly by Dean, who switched across to left half, left corner forward at this stage, but they stayed in the match. They were only two points down at the break, and now they lead by two. John Brown, Michael Dignan gets it into the stick. Offaly advance, it's back here to Joe Dooley. He went for it, he might have taken a point. Still pressure around, and it's in there, but it's just gone off of the fender. John Ryan, the last one to strike it, and Brian Corcoran got a vital touch. Corker under serious pressure. This was the serious pressure. I thought Joe Dooley might have gone for a point there. He went for the goal instead, and watch it, came off the leg of Brian Corcoran. And Donal Cusick did very, very well there as well. The 65 will be taken by Johnny Dooley, and this is the first of the match. Just a very light breeze blowing across the field, if anything, right now. Very light, however. And that has gone to the left. That's surprising, and it's a bad miss. It's, a, it's, it's definitely a bad miss from Johnny. He won't be one bit happy with that. I could have driven another nail in their coffin. That's just their first wide of the second half and their third in all. And Neil Ronan is coming into the game. As we watch this again from behind the goal this time, this was awfully at their most threatening. And John Ryan had the vital last touch and missed. A goal there could have tied up the match. Ronan is coming in and Fergal McCormack has made way. That's two of the half forward line who have now gone. And the other one, Alan Brown, is in at full forward just now. So they haven't been too happy with that particular sector. The ball played in here once again towards Kevin Murray. They tried to attack with some purpose and menace, but it is swept out once again. Simon Wheelahan, Kevin Murray, picking it up, taking it through, stopped by Joe Errity, and it's a free into court. 20 metres out. Murray is usually good for a point or two. To be fair to Joe Errity, he's holding down that centre-back position without being spectacular and giving a chance for Brian Wheelan and Kevin Martin to play particularly much better. And his man who started on it, Fergal McCormack, has been withdrawn. This is a free for Joe Dean. It's one the champions need. He's put it over the bar. He's got ten points in all. Eleven minutes remain, and Offaly have a one-point advantage. And it's Cork, tight, it's tense, it's very competitive. And Cork don't really look composed or organised as well as normal. And certainly this must offer, uh, be a great opportunity for Offaly now if they can keep the, the push and the drive on this game. Last year, in the last nine minutes, Cork got five points. Offaly failed to score, having led at that stage by 16 points to 14. Here's Joe Dooley. Still the pressure there, but Joe is deemed to have held back his man. He protests the decision, but it's going to be a free out. It's a bad mistake by, by a bad mistake by Joe if he fouled here. It's a bad mistake for him to do that. Yeah, but then is it a bit harsh? I'm not quite sure. Well, you get some, you lose others. Dermot O'Sullivan firing it way up into the square towards Joe Dean. The broken play. Errity trying to get it away. Wheelan's after him, trying to help. It comes across beyond Shotty McGrath. Offley really are fired up at this stage. Towards Gary Hanafy. Shot go Halpin. Nice ball across to Wayne Sherlock. Dropped in once again. Neil Ronan's after it. And Keenahan, who's had a superb second half, has got it again. Pressurized by Ronan. That's a great catch by Johnny Dooley. Two men waiting for it inside, but Dermot O'Sullivan knocks it out only as far as Gary Hannafy. Hannafy looking for the point, and Hannafy gets it. Gary Hannafy's got his third point of the game. 16 points to 14. The position I mentioned earlier, this is the state of the game with Nine minutes remaining last year. There's a lot of resolve in this offensive team at the moment. It's making such a difference. In fairness, I think we should call now this uh, uh, to Kevin Kinahan has been spectacularly good in the second half. He's shown tremendous guts to come back. And we're often, you know, find fault with players are not going well. We must all show, show them great credit for a comeback like he has made. He's been wonderful in the second half. 
Yeah, he has had a wonderful last 10 years, really, as fullback, as John Ryan gets the attention. Kina, who will want to be remembered for his great second half here, and not for the uh, miserable first 35 minutes he had to endure. But it's an example of everybody who plays the game, isn't it? You know, it's not over to the fat lady sings, and she might sing for Offaly tonight. It was also a gamble from the selector's point of view, and it's paid off so far. But this is the new one. This is a new rule, Ger. But this is where they've it's been there for years. Outside gonna... the small rectangle yeah. with yeah. his puck out, and it's going to be a free in. 65. 65 meters out. This is this is brand new. It's in the book for years. We haven't implemented it, so we chose to implement it for the Ireland semi-final. An interesting day to implement it. To be fair, how did we do from the very start of the year? Well, I've come across it being used also in club matches. He stepped outside the small square when he was taking the puck out, and that is a 65. First one of the championship. All are in semi-final. Six or seven minutes to go, is it? Johnny Dooley taking it. Could be a costly yes. mistake. He's put it over the bar. And your look is in. Offaly, the no-hopers going into the game. But now they've got plenty of chance and plenty of hope. And now you get the feeling Cork need a goal. The champions in trouble. Ger Oakley over there has discarded the yellow helmet, protesting that it might be Offaly's ball, but it's going to be Cork's. Ger Coughlin and Pat Cleary. Pat who scored, scored a goal in the 1985 final when Offaly won the All-Ireland for the second time. There's Mickey O'Connell inside towards Dean. People will wonder what happened in the second half. Why wasn't he getting more ball? Here he comes once again. Stopped by Stephen Byrne, and he was under a lot of pressure. Kevin Murray was coming in, Ronan was about as well, but Byrne held on. Great goalkeeping. I think Cork will regret you the first half when they were totally on top and were giving in the ball to Joe Dean. They were hitting a long ball over him. But then you come to the wide tally, and it's 14 for Cork at this stage, only three for Offaly, just one in the second half. They don't look well in the forwards. They just don't look, uh, they don't look to have that threat at the back, at the, at the attack now, Cork. They're under pressure, and Gary hannafy has got it again. Going forward once again, out to Pilkington, on for Johnny Dooley, they should take a point here, and they do. Six points now for Johnny Dooley, and it's 18 points to 14. Gary Hanafy is forming a triangle with Johnny Dooley and with Joe, uh, Johnny Pilkington, and it's making such a difference. That was a fine movement and a great score. Are the champions from last year about to surrender their crown? Six minutes remain in this Guinness All-Ireland Hurling semi-final. Two very determined teams. Simon Whelan determined to get that ball away. Ben O'Connor trying to take it from him. Alan Brown was there as well. Dean trying to get the stick to it. Shawty McGrath trying to advance. Keenan's there. Still on the ground, but now in the end, taken up by the unmistakable figure of Brian Whelan. Listen to the cheer now. What a clearance. Down towards Hanafy. He breaks it once again. Dagna was anticipating. And Dagna comes across John Brown that time, committed the foul, and it's a free to Cork. I can't understand Cork forwards. They're all in a heap like sheep around the goal. It's amazing, and they have no chance trying to battle it out with those guys in there with that strength they have. And, they're, you know, they're on top of everybody. There's no space whatsoever for them to hurl. It's like panicking, you know, in, in the hope of trying to win the match, which is surprising from Cork. Mickey O'Connell will take this. Lobbing it in, they try and get a goal here. And still, there's great off defending, and it's Kevin Keenan who was at the end of that. There was a little block at it, but it's gone out for Cork's first 65. This is the ball still in the air, Keenan there taking it along. And in the end, he may just have taken it out over the end line. It's O'Connell again. Vital ball. Dropped in, dropped to the right this time. Looks to be going away from Cork here, you have to say it, looks to be going away from them. Only four minutes to go, they trail by four points. Awfully the complete no-hopers, but you can never say you've beaten an awfully team. They always fight. And look where, look where Joe Dooley is playing, practically in midfield, 36 years of age. Stephen Byrne. 
Mickey O'Connell tries to knock it down. Derek Barrett's around as well. That's Johnny Dooley getting it forward. Michael Dignan trying to advance. Brian Corcoran's led a merry dance on this occasion. Dignan. Gary Hanafi's calling for the pass. Never came his way. Instead, it's David O'Sullivan. A booming clearance down towards Joe Dean. He slips, however, and Simon Wheelahan takes it. The back line of Offaly has simply grown in confidence the longer this match has gone on. That's back to John Ryan, and that has gone wide. The Offaly fans were anticipating, they were cheering already. They may be cheering in about three minutes' time. They look to be on their way to another All-Ireland final. Alan Brown, two men coming in to try and challenge. Still Brown, trying to dish it off there towards McGrath, but it's Whelan who takes it out. And Joel Dooley playing in his 10th semi-final. He's won five so far. Is he about to win a sixth? It seems like he is. Back to Gary Hanafi. And that shot's gone wide, but the important thing is the ball is down that side and the pressure is being maintained on the court backs. Puck out taken quickly. Ben O'Connor. Cork must get a goal, otherwise forget the championship for this year. Mickey O'Connell was trying to take it up, but it's Simon Wheelahan instead. Wheelahan, magnificent. Tremendous character from Offaly here. This is a wonderful performance. There's Gary Hanafi trying to advance against Sean O'Gohalpine. Michael Jagnan. Here they come once again. Johnny Dooley. Gary Hanafi, stick broken. Sean O'Gohalpine stick. Brian Corcoran up to Ben O'Connor. Hand passing it inside to Mickey O'Connell. Still they come through. Cork looking for a late score. Shawnee McGrath. And it's deflected away. But Joe Errity, the one who got it out. They're not going to walk it through that defence, I can tell you that. McGrath dropped in dangerously. Dean's at the back, but he wasn't, won't get it. Instead, it's his man, Simon Wheelahan. Tidy player. Playing fantastic. Playing fantastic, Simon Wheelahan. That's Joe Dooley back out there helping his defence. And still there's danger but at least Offaly have the cushion of a lead of four points and now they have the possession once again Niall Claffey one minute remaining the doctors were on of course to attend to injured players so it'll be at the discretion of the referee as Fergal Ryan is beaten as John Ryan advances laying it off to Michael Dignan blocked down by Brian Corcoran comes back here towards Wayne Sherlock tremendous hurling by players all over the park. Ben O'Connor. Oakley's after him. Wheelahan's after him. Still Ben O'Connor. And it was Dermot O'Sullivan who went way up field to try and take the pass. Here's Joe Dean. The full back has stayed forward. Dean strikes it and he has put the ball wide. And it was Joe, uh, jo, uh, Joe Dooley, or Johnny Dooley, Joe Dooley actually who picked up that ball in back in his own half back line. And Paul Parker actually finished solo the ball through for a goal. It's not proven very successful. If you're going to win this, it's a tremendous, wonderful performance by Offaly again. They never we're, cease to amaze you. We're in injury time. They lost the Leinster final for the third year in a row. They won the All-Ireland by coming through the so-called backdoor system in 98. The only team to ever do it. And they're going to have another chance this year. And the preparations can begin in a few seconds' time. Johnny Dooley shot. And that was hit effortlessly and with great confidence and tremendous accuracy over the bar. What a His fabulous player. Point. What a fabulous player. What a fabulous point. I mean, that's what he properly needed. Fellas like Johnny, and he wasn't found wanting. Look at Joel back again. It's just incredible. Shawnee McGrath on his hands and knees. John Brown. They're all going forward. But they've left it late at this stage. Too many chances were missed. And Shawnee McGrath puts it over the bar. Now just, you know Cocker beat, not, a, not hardly a raise of a chair. It just na narrows the gap ever so slightly, four between them. And there going on is Killian Farrell from Eden Derry. Might use up another second or two, but the faithful county of Offaly will recognise that they're on their way to this year's All-Ireland final against either Galway or Kilkenny. Remember those... Uh, Finals of the past involving Offaly.
Some dramatic moments there, and one to look forward to at the beginning of September. I think All Ireland final day is the 10th. There's Ben O'Connor, blocked down, still going through. Joe Dean is over there chasing. And Cork get themselves a free in. For a consolation prize, it looks low, doesn't it, at this stage, Joe? Yep. Killian Farrell has just come into the action, giving his little piece of paper there to referee Willie Barrett. Free in, and uh, Michael Dignan's got off, by the way, but lots of changes late in the game. Dermot O'Sullivan has gone up to join the attack. John Brown is up there as well. They've left Brian Corcoran behind. Johnny Pilkington has also been taken off. Late changes. Joe Dean going short to Ben O'Connor. They whip it in. That's Dermot O'Sullivan. The whistle. Ball is going for The match is over. And the first of the Guinness semi-finals in Hurling. Won by the 98 champions, Offaly. They held it as tight as possible to the All-Ireland champions from last year, up to half-time. They trailed by two points at that stage, but they've won in the end by four. They had a belief in themselves, they had wonderful hurlers. The Cork team had a total of 16 wides in all against just five for Offaly. That told its tale, but it was a tale also of character. Ger Coughlin, one of the selectors, Johnny Pilkington, Beaten in the Leinster final, beaten badly at that. Their fans were dispirited. They didn't do all that brilliantly in the quarter-final, but full credit to Derry. But today they were sensational. They have knocked out Cork. We will have new champions in the year 2000. And the final score at Croke Park, just a reminder, one which Offaly fans will love seeing and reading. Offaly 19 points, Cork 15. Last year's champions are out. Yeah, wonderful performance by Offaly, you know, uh, and a wonderful performance for Leinster Hurling. I was, it's, you know, this team never ceases to amaze you. It was a gutsy, pure character and pride performance. That's what else can you say? And let's go down to Marty Morrissey. Johnny Dooley, captain of Offaly, can you believe us? I certainly can, Marty. Uh, everybody's been writing us off all week, but we felt confident we could do it, you know. There's great belief in this team and great character, and... You have only to look at Johnny Pickson and a few of the players, Brian Wheel, and the performances today was unbelievable. And you know, Cork are a great team, like the 27 All Irelands, and you know, we respect them, but uh, we're not afraid of them, you know. What was the motivation? Was it to prove that this Offaly team had something left in the tank? Certainly, you know, uh, there's good players on this team, and uh, people keep putting us down, but uh, the more they put us down, the more we like to come back up, you know. So, as I said, there's only a victory today, there's still another game left, and uh, you know. Considering your team performances in the championship so far, were you expecting this level? I know uh, we had a meeting uh, Thursday night, and uh, I know by the lads they were fairly determined. So uh, they kept their heads down and uh, reduced the performance today. They were, they were uh, hurling do the talking, you know. Well, well done, Johnny Julie. Just beside you is Ger Oakley. Ger, you certainly proved your uh, worth out in the middle of the field today. Things the case I had to, wasn't it? <laughs> I got it tough there near the end, though, so they. <laughs> but, uh, that's great to come true now. What rekindled the awfully spirit that we've seen in the past? We didn't anticipate this to happen today. The American between yourself and yourself, we've seen the game last year. And you don't, I don't think I realise how much that game hurt Offaly. There's so much hurt there. We, we really want to win this today. Really want to win this today. And you got tied up in the last 15 minutes. Nothing went through. Absolutely nothing. Well, you're back in Croke Park in an All-Ireland hurling final. I'm not complaining. <laughs> well, well done, Jeff. Joining us as well is Pat Flurry when we get him. Pat? Well, you, you believed, you told me during the week, you believed in this team, you felt there was one last major performance left, and it certainly produced it today. Well, I hope to God that's not the last major performance, because <laughs> that one's only got us as far as the final, and it took everything we had to get there, I think you'll agree. Obviously, the preparations have gone, I heard from some Offaly sources, but the training this last week was something special down in County Offaly. Well, we like to think it's special all the time, but people differ, you know, but sometimes training goes well and sometimes doesn't, and Sometimes when training goes well, the team comes out and plays poorly, and sometimes the opposite happens. It's very, very difficult to legislate for some of the time, you know, but we've had our problems, there's no getting away from that. Today, I think, was a victory for the heart of this Anthony team, and they're, they're fantastic fellas. There's nothing I can say about them that hasn't already been said. And even the younger guys today came in and they were brilliant, you know.
lads like this young fella here, Brendan Murphy, Gary Hannity, and the older guys like Joe Dooley, they're running at the end there like a, like a young fella, you know? Fantastic. Well, well done, Pat Glory. Let's have one last word with Simon Whelan. Simon, certainly awfully proved a point today. Oh, we proved a point. We were waiting 12 months for this game, and... Uh... <laughs> that just happened to be Johnny Pinkin, yeah. didn't it? Well, that's right, that's right. Uh, we went for 10 months for this game. Last year we should have won. I think we defied all the odds today. Like, you know, we come up and we won. Brilliant performance. What was the spirit like? Because nobody are really, bar the awfully players and some awfully people, actually anticipated this was going to happen. Like, in the papers all week, they said one good game we left an awfully and stuff, but the journalist said that it won't be good enough. I think we defied all the odds. No, none of the favourites won in goal all week. The writing was on the cards, like, and you know, all. Today, you know, we proved it. Oh my God, it's fantastic. I can't believe it. Well, well done, Simon, and well done to Offaly. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Yes, well done to everybody in Offaly. Cork out, Offaly advance, and it's the first time, Liam, ever that Offaly have beaten Cork in a championship match. My God, I'm, I'm amazed by that myself, really. I wasn't aware, but it was a wonderful victory for them. And there's so many players who were brilliant. Simon Whelan, Gary Hannafy, Johnny Plickington, John Ryan had an, an outstanding game, and Joe Dooley ringing around the place. You know, you're, you're at, they were playing for their lives today, and you, could, and you could see that, and that's what it was on the line, because they had flopped in the last couple of the finals, let's be fair. Yes, but they're there, they're in the final, they'll be playing either Galway or Kilkenny, and that will be on September the 10th, the All-Ireland Final for 2000. It will be unbelievable if the score of the board didn't tell you that Offaly have won this All-Ireland semi-final by four points. The view of Tomás Mulcahy and Pete Finnerty after the break. final is going to be one hell of a battle whatever way it works out Offaly are going to be in that they could be in against their old rivals in Denster, Kilkenny or their neighbours across the border over in the west there in Galway however the statistics from today is the one that the Offaly people will be looking at they have won that match by 19 points to 15 uh, Cork had 12 frees against Offaly's 10 now look at this figure Cork 16 wides that's the one that really made them suffer that was 11 more wides than Offaly in the course of the game 365s and there was a yellow card at least Jeremy Sullivan was booked in the first half uh, for Cork and in the second half it was Gary Hannafy for Offaly those are the statistics the main statistic however is Tomás Mulcahy that it's Offaly will be in this year's All-Ireland Hurling Final yes and there's not really so Michael I mean you've got to take your hats off to, to Offaly I mean they, would be, they were written off all week um, they were wounded they were hurt um, but at the end of the day, to me, it's all about pride and a bit of heart and a bit of guts and the pride in your own jersey, in your county jersey. And at the end of the day, I mean, you could see towards the end of the game, 10 minutes ago, no matter what happened in the cock forward line, there was awfully men there. They were throwing their legs in, they were throwing their, their hands in to get position. And they were a team possessed in the second half period. And give great credit to, to Pat Flory and his management team and, and to the players themselves. I mean, they totally deserved the victory today. And uh, Cork will be disappointed. Um, there were favourites coming into the game, but like as I said before, the, before the start, uh, at the start of the programme, you've still got to go out and play. You've still got to earn your right to get into an All-Ireland final. And today, they, they didn't earn that right, and you give credit to, to Offaly. Yeah, it's quite incredible over the past 20 years, Pete Finnerty, isn't it? I mean, the number of times this team has been stung and has come back, winning the All-Ireland in 85 after being hammered by Cork the previous year, and of course two years ago as well, all that that happened. And this is another chapter. It is indeed, like, and you look at the Offaly against Derry and you look at the Offaly today and, and <laughs> they're two different teams um, completely. Um, you can say about what Cork missed, you can say about what Offaly did, you can say what you like, but at the end of the day, it was the mental preparation that Pat Flory had worked on what he spoke about before the match. Offaly were so keyed up for that game and they were so mentally perfect that Cork could do with the light in the second half and they weren't going to break them, especially there towards the end. There's a lot of ball going in around the square, but Offaly were getting bodies behind it. Brian Whelan came into the game, Simon Whelan was having a great game throughout, Hannafy at centre forward, destroyed yeah. Brian Corkin. Yeah. And at the end of the day, maybe it was the loyalty that Cork had to Brian Corkin that, that, that was their downfall, because in the first half, anybody out there could see that Brian Corkin wasn't having a happy day. But we and could also see, mind you, that Kevin Keenan wasn't have, having a happy day, and he had a stormer the second half. So <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 he's really, really committed really into the, the game. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in the second half period, uh, I, I suppose when you look at Cork, look back at it again, and like the one thing they did do in the second half was bunched and bunched very much so in a topic. Kevin Keenan and we saw him come out time and time with balls raining down on top of him. That's the type of position Kevin Keenan likes and uh, in fairness to the awfully back lane in the second half period, they were fantastic. 
They were absolutely brilliant. Well, it was all up for grabs, Pete, midway through the second half. And then Brendan Murphy, who had had quite enough first half, he got the score that put Offaly into the lead, a lead that they never lost then after that. Two Cork players, mind you, don't injured during this. Yeah, two players were on the ground at this stage. And Jim O'Sullivan made a great burst out, out the field with the ball and, and lost it. And he came out here to Brendan Murphy, who just pops it over the bar. That's in fact, I, I thought that, that maybe O'Sullivan was fouled prior to this, but that's neither here nor there now. When Murphy got the opportunity, a player who wasn't really in the game, he has one look up and he puts it over the bar. And again, it, 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 it just reflects on, on the statistic of 16 wides or whatever it was to five. Murphy gets one opportunity, he puts it over the bar. At the other end, Joe um, or McGrath was getting ball after yeah. ball after ball. He didn't have the con confidence to shoot. Mm -hmm. But uh, as we saw there, Joe Dooley tapped over a pint. Johnny um, Pilkington, our old friend, came up again with another yeah. pint in the second half. They were contributing all throughout the game. And I said at halftime, if Joe Dean was taken out of the game, mm -hmm. what were Cork going to do? And Keenan took him out in the second half. And if you look, Tomas, into the half-forward line for Offaly, I mean, you have eight points scored in that half-forward line, three of them by Gary Hannafy. Yeah, and I mean, it was crucial. We, we mentioned the Cork half-forward line at halftime was, was struggling. Cork only scored two points in the second half period. But this man, uh, Gary Hannafy, was superb today. And uh, great, great variety to his play. A great man underneath the high ball. Again, typical centre forward watching for the breaking ball and scores an excellent point here that put, virtually puts the nail in the coffin of, of Cork in that second half period. But there's great variety to his game. Um, centre forward is one of, I would always feel, one of the toughest positions to play in Hurling because you have to vary your game so you much. You played know? there. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I, I played there and um, I would always found it very difficult. But today he, yeah. he, he adjusted to the role superbly. He won puck outs when they were breaking in front of Brian Cochran. He kept the ball moving and kept the ball moving yeah. inside yeah. as well yeah. and played a superb game. game. People talk about the Offaly team almost like coming back from the dead today, Pete. But I mean, look, let's look at the reality of this. They were the All Ireland champions two years ago. They were beaten narrowly last year in the All Ireland semi final. And this year, earlier in the campaign against Wexford, they were described as class performance, polished performance. Mm. So maybe we overstated how bad they were going into this. We, we possibly did. Now, looking at that team, we definitely did. There's mm -hmm. no possible about it. Um, but as you said, against Wexford, they looked very good. And we said, Offaly are back this year. They're focused. The next thing, there's a little bit of rumpus in the castle with um, John Fry. They had yeah. a bad Leinster final. And you can't take away. They had a bad Leinster final. And they had a poor outing against Derry. Yeah. And when you see the attitude today and the hurling that those guys can play and what they played against Derry and against Kilkenny, you have to question, like, what was wrong with the mental attitude? Or are they, are they so professional that they can, like good poker players, that when they have a bad hand, they're going to pretend they have a good one, when the good one is a bad one. They can, they can actually time it to perfection now. They're in the All-Ireland final again. Last year, they were only two points away from the All-Ireland final, and yep. the year before, they won it. And oddly enough, Jerry would be saying to themselves, they weren't too far away from the All-Ireland final, perhaps, as well, this year. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We're back with more after that. So it's confirmation then of today's results in the Guinness All-Ireland Hurling Championship in the minor uh, semi-final. First of all, uh, Cork will be in this year's All-Ireland Final. That was after their hard-fought win, it has to be said, over Dublin. And they will play either Galway or Offaly, who will meet next Sunday. And of course, Offaly will very much have an involvement in this year's All-Ireland Final after their famous win over Cork this afternoon. Four points to the good in the end. Now let me uh, just give you a quick reminder as well about our programme later on tonight. We have highlights of this afternoon's semi-final. We'll have further analysis from Tomás and Cyril Farrell will be with us as well. And we'll be naming our man of the match from the big game. Plus we have highlights from this afternoon's Leinster Ladies football final. That was between Meath and Dublin played down there in Carlo. Now of course we always welcome your views onto the programme. These are the numbers to ring. It's 1850 309 815.